Helga, vielen Dank für diese fantastische äh, Rede. Ich denke, wir haben... Many thanks, Helga, for this fantastic speech. So I think we have a lot of material now from this one. And you have brought up issues that are also included in the questions that have been sent to us during the presentation, but also before. I want to begin with one of the most important issues, which is the threatening war danger. And this is the first threat we have to manage. I want to bring up the following. Es gibt immer wieder das Argument, ich glaube nicht, dass es tatsächlich It's always the argument that people say, I don't think this threat is real, because if we start a world war, man will become extinct, so neither the US nor Russia will start such a war. The press says that neither Obama nor Netanyahu will attack Iran, but I think Helge, you have mentioned, went through this, that this is just a lie. And the other thing that people say is, well, Israel can not do anything against Iran, so it will never come to such a war. Another question, which also reflects this kind of attitude, reaches us, and the questioner asks, I've been following the Middle East for a lot of time, and uh, people don't take it serious. People don't know about things about the area, and uh, people are in their own world. None of our Congress or our federal parliamentarians show, look above their own horizon. And what I have found in talking to those people is only disinterest. Those people think when you talk to them that you're talking about conspiracies, but I will not rest, writes the questioner to us. Um, I will further discuss with these people and bring this up. But why is this issue, the warfare, why is this not being listened to? I think that's the case with many people, but I also think it's very useful to look at the uh, prehistory to the First World War and as, as the uh, precursor to the First World, Second World War. Many people never believed it would come at that time to, to another war. Now, we've already written that the prehistory to the First World War was the uh, release of uh, Bismarck at the time when he was uh, forced out. And the Check checker chessboard was put into place for the conflict to come through the Triple Entente, through the Russian-Japanese war, through the wars in the Balkans. This was all from the standpoint of the, the alleged danger, uh, geopolitical danger at the time, which was uh, put forth by Mackinder and so on about the Eurasian landmass, that whoever controlled it, this landmass would control the world. This was a reaction of the British Empire uh, because they were the sea uh, maritime power at the time. And we had the, uh, they saw the railway from Baghdad to Berlin, for example, as a danger at the time. So all of these, all of these things, in fact, it was planned to start a, a war uh, in which Germany would be uh, contained. But then when the First World War was a four years of trench warfare, it was incredible. And the and every people who took part in it were destroyed. And this laid the basis for the Second World War then. And I don't think anybody planned that it would take this path. And right now we have uh, the situation where there's an enormous arsenal which is being put together 
chicken game with the idea of kind of playing a thermonuclear chicken game. Now, chicken game, chicken game is uh, what used to be played where two auto drivers would uh, rush toward one another and then whoever first uh, deviated out of the way was called the chicken. And they say, okay, now, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to have regime change. Uh, it worked in Libya. Uh, more or less because Russia and China remain neutral. So now let's go further, they say, uh, towards Syria. But now, this time, Russia and China have not remained reserved. They have very clearly spoken out against that policy because they've understood, in fact, that this is a rollback strategy uh, to go from one regime change to the next. And I think the test is really whether Russia and China are going to capitulate or not. Because, I mean, the, the apparatus that's now being used to destabilize Russia, and that since last September, is basically the same apparatus that was uh, used in the Orange Revolution in the to finance the Orange Revolution in the Ukraine. This involves George Soros, Project Democracy, the Institute of Republican, in, International Republican Institute, and another one on the Democratic side. This is an enormous network of activists, of uh, people who are going against this government. So the plan to destabilize the uh, Putin government is very huge. And now I think since the uh, victory of Putin, it might take a different direction. But the idea that all governments will be brushed away in one way or another who are against the empire, that remains valid. And that's what we want to change. Now, I think that the mistake and calculation, the, the, the error, the danger that the, that the danger be uh, underestimated is enormous. It would be so easy, almost just by inadvertently, uh, if there's a small incident somewhere with the boats in that area, that this could lead uh, quickly to something much bigger. Or if there's a provocation, such as the Gulf of Tonkin at the time. This is really a criminal policy to even put into place such a military potential. It's the danger is simply too great that humanity will be wiped out because of that. And many people don't want to uh, take into account a, a nuclear war. Uh, there are others who think it would be good. All of these people who say, oh, the Earth can only handle one, million, one billion people anyway. We have to reduce the, the population drastically. And they probably would find it nice to have a big boy, uh, war that wipes out humanity. But I have to say very clearly that the reason why I brought up this danger of a nuclear winter so in detail is because these people are making a serious mistake. It's a wrong calculation because we have a potential overkill of nuclear weapons. And that was one of the reasons why, at the time, the uh, talks began to limit the nuclear weapons available. Because what we, what we now have is more than enough to annihilate humanity. And some people think, well, I'm okay, I have my own underground bunker where I can go in case there's a war, uh, and after that I'll come out and I'll be okay even though the, the rest of the world is destroyed. But they're also making a big mistake because when they do come out one year later or whatever, they'll come out into a completely irradiated world. 
And they, therefore, we have to realize how important it is to change course now.